Good morning, friends, and happy Easter Sunday as I record this. It is Easter Sunday, the first day of Easter tide, and yes, <clears throat> Jesus has risen again. Jesus is out of the grave, um, and it is a joy to be with you on this Easter Sunday morning. What I want to do for the next several weeks is go through Eastertide um, and look at the various resurrection appearances throughout the Gospel. So today I think we'll start with just a brief reflection on the women at the tomb, the first sort of main resurrection appearance in the Gospel of Luke, excuse me. <clears throat> um, and then over the next several weeks, I'll pick out several of the various uh, post-resurrection appearances throughout all the Gospels, and we'll reflect on those. So I look forward to that journey with you. But what I want to talk about today is just... I want to do less a reflection on the text exactly and more in a conversation around how does Easter find you this year. It's been a challenging year. I feel like the most stereotypical thing I could say right now is it's been a challenging year <clears throat> because everybody knows that. But I think that leads me to ask... The question, how does Easter find you this year? The way I want to frame that is, what do you need from the resurrected Christ? Or how do you encounter the fact that Christ is resurrected? <clears throat> Are you coming to Easter this year like the women who came to the tomb? with your spices and with your everyday concerns and just ready to sort of bury your emotions and work and continue to do what you have done from day to day to get through, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> if so, I invite you to be amazed by the new possibilities you can encounter through a resurrected Christ. May God show you how your day-to-day -day survival and existence can be transformed from maybe even the good that it already is to something better and deeper and richer through a resurrected Christ. Do you come <clears throat> to this Easter like the disciples, scattered and broken and maybe bitter and frustrated and perplexed and hidden, waiting for this time and place to be over with or waiting to be consumed by grief and struggle and maybe anger or frustration and wondering how God can still be there and what God might be saying to you or waiting on with all the silence you encounter. I must confess <clears throat> as we go through this pandemic from day to day and my family waits on the various hiring possibilities and processes as my wife, as we celebrate my wife finishing her PhD, but we wait on full-time employment and for God to provide what is next for us in terms of our whole family as much as I love the work I'm doing through the Julian Way, <clears throat> I do feel a little bit like those disciples 
waiting in that room going, okay, God, what are you up to? <clears throat> My wife is so brilliantly talented. Why, why hasn't something come forward for us both yet or for our family yet? So I feel a little bit like those disciples. I invite us to encounter the news from the women, not as idle talk as the scripture says, but as a chance to receive the freedom of a resurrected Christ and to come out of our hiding places and maybe even give God our grief more directly and say, God, I am grieving, I am hurting, I am waiting on you, but I know that something is around the corner. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you where I'm hurting. I'm going to tell you where I'm grieving. But I'm going to give it to you and trust that you have been resurrected and me and come out from my hiding place or my room into the sunlight of a resurrected Christ. <clears throat> or maybe you encounter this Easter like Peter. Uncertain, un, un, uh, uncertain of what's really going on and unsure of what is next, but full of excitement. So you run to the tomb and you have to see for yourself because Christ has set you free from grief or from doubt or from darkness. Maybe 2020 was a time of darkness and maybe a certain sense of betrayal for you. So this, this is really a time for you to run towards freedom even in all your uncertainty and uh, in all of your childlike trying to find your sea legs, maybe the empty tomb means freedom and redemption for you. If so, I encourage you and I pray with you to keep running towards that tomb and to go home amazed with a sense of freedom and calling and new life that the resurrection might bring. <clears throat> so I'll conclude with the statements from the angels, no matter where we are, how we encounter Easter. I encourage us not to look for the living among the dead, but to move forward knowing that Christ is resurrected and Christ is alive and over the next few weeks as we look into the various resurrection appearances of Christ may that reoccur to us and become new to us through every story and may you today tomorrow and forever feel the power of the resurrected Christ thank you friends bye-bye